Hey you guys, welcome to my channel or welcome back if it is not your first time. Today I'm going to be doing a video where I answer your frequently asked questions regarding food science and career questions. I find that I get a lot of the same questions on some of my videos and Instagram and things like that. If you guys are new to my channel, my name is Ima. I currently work in the food industry and I got my bachelor's of science in food science from the University of Illinois. So a lot of you all may have seen my vlog or other sit down videos that I've done regarding food science and these videos I wish that they were on the internet when I was going into food science or going into my career of food science but it's okay so definitely make sure to hit the subscribe button and follow me on Instagram if you guys would like to see what I get up to on the weekends or throughout the week or just what I post on Instagram. Definitely follow me there. It will be linked below and it will be on the screen as well. So I will link previous Q&As in the description box so you guys can see other questions that I've answered before. Chances are if I don't answer the question in this video, I've answered it in a previous video. So like what I do, things like that was in the last Q&A. So my laptop is here and I'm just gonna go ahead and read off some questions and answer them. Okay, the first question is, I'm just wondering, could you get a job with a bachelor's degree? And the answer to this question is yes. I tend to get this question quite a bit, which kind of confuses me sometimes, but yes, with a bachelor's degree, you can definitely find a lot of job opportunities. I have my bachelor's of science in food science. I have not gotten a master's yet. I don't know if I'm gonna get a master's or a PhD. I just don't know yet, but Obviously with more education, more doors could open for you depending on the role that you're looking for or the area of expertise. There are some jobs in the food industry where you do need more than a bachelor's degree. So yes, you can get plenty of jobs with a bachelor's degree, but it really depends on what do you wanna do? Like, do you wanna specialize in something? Then you will have to get more education or another degree in order to find a job in that field. The next question is, is it possible to do food science even if math isn't your strongest subject? So the answer to this question is yes. It depends on how strong or how weak you feel like you are in math because I know in my role currently, I work in food regulatory and there have been times where I have to do a conversion here, do a little quick math here, um, but it really just depends on your role. So I think it is possible to do food science even if math isn't your strong subject. There are so many other areas that you could be strong in that could really help you do well in food science, but I do feel like anything that you're maybe not super strong in, you should try to find out why. Like, what are your weaknesses? Is it that you don't understand? Is it that maybe you aren't applying certain methods or you just aren't really applying yourself? Why do you feel like you aren't strong in math? Because later down the road, you do wanna be able to do some like basic math, but some of these like stoichiometry, chemistry, and food engineering equations, you may not necessarily need to be super strong in because later down the road, you may not want to do that. You may not want to be in a role that has a lot of calculations and formulations and things like that. So the answer is yes, but it will also depend on what role you want to do in the future. The next question is, I'm so grateful I stumbled upon your channel. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm a high school science teacher considering a master's in food science. Do you currently have less stress and a better work-life balance than when you were a teacher? I love this question. Um, first of all, if you guys don't know, I actually was a food science and technology teacher for two years two whole years and um, during that opportunity I learned a lot about food science, teaching myself and what I really really wanted to do and what I really didn't want to do. With that I also get a lot of questions about why did you leave teaching? You know do you feel a lot less stressed now that you've left the teaching field? To answer that question yes I do have a lot less stress and yes I do have a better work-life balance. I personally feel like when I was a teacher I didn't want to be a teacher long term so for me 
I just knew that I was putting in a lot of effort for a career that I wasn't really trying to stay in. So I mainly left because that wasn't my long-term goal. I had the ability to teach and the opportunity to teach was there, but I just personally felt like if this isn't my long-term career goal, I don't wanna get stuck, I don't wanna like it's stuck y'all so I decided to go ahead and leave that opportunity and pursue opportunities in the industry which is closely tied to my long-term goal so that is mainly why I left it was very very stressful I think teachers don't get enough credit for how much work they do I was never done with work I would go to work and Granted, the school that I worked for was not like your traditional, just basic school. It was like an agricultural school. So we had a farm and I had a lab, I had a classroom. And there were so many different things that I had to manage. After a while, I said, no, this is too much stress because even then after leaving work, I would have papers to grade. I would have lesson plans to look over. I would have um, things to go pick up from the store for different labs. And I feel like I was working so hard. I was working so hard and only so much of it can be really rewarding for you because there are some students who have behavioral issues and you have to discipline them. And it's just emotionally, it was very emotionally draining. So yes, I do have a better work-life balance and I'm just really grateful that I did make that switch when I did because I actually left that industry right before the pandemic and I'm so grateful. I'm just so grateful because whew, I'm just so grateful. It wasn't like the easiest thing afterwards but yeah, I'm grateful that I left when I did. Just back to the comment, I think a master's in food science would be really, really fun. And kind of going off of that question, the next question is, how do you maintain work-life balance in this industry? And so just kind of putting that all in one, the reason why I say my work-life balance is a lot better now because I don't have to go home with all this work kind of like looming over my head and I feel as if I've gotten a better grip on boundaries in the workplace and being able to schedule my life not just work 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 I can balance working out I can balance hanging out I can balance trying new things traveling and just not having this pressure that I have to get everything done today yes there are deadlines yes there are things that need to get done at a certain time but Working in the corporate world for me, I feel like there's just healthier boundaries. Don't get me wrong. It there, you know, there's things that need to get done. Things need to get done and there are deadlines, but just realizing that, okay, tomorrow I can get that done. Today this needs to get done. Teaching was a stressful time, you guys. It was a stressful time. I think I'm gonna do a video all about how I became a teacher because I know a lot of people have those kind of questions. Is there a big difference between food science and nutrition science? I'm planning to do a nutrition science degree majoring in food innovation. Um, and that's like, that's so cool. Yes, there is a difference. I have done a video talking about this in detail. I will link it down below and I will link it up in one of the cards for you. They are different and hopefully that video can answer that question in depth. Which has been more valuable in your career? your education or your work experience. Both of them are valuable. I have to say getting an education is like, it's so valuable. No one can do that for you and you just work so hard and you pay a lot of money or you get a lot of scholarships, which you worked hard for. <laughs> this question made me think, this question made me think and I would say right after graduating university, my degree felt very 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 valuable and i didn't have a ton of work experience so at that time i felt yeah my education is more valuable but as i grow and get more into my career and years away from college i do find that my work experience is actually more valuable because after a while like it's on your resume, you got your degree, but then it's like, okay, but how did you apply it? How did you get that education and now like open doors for yourself and apply it and, you know, do something with this? So I think I would say overall, after you get your degree, 
your work experience is more valuable. When I am looking at opportunities or looking to move to the next level, it's more about, okay, but what work experience do I have under my belt? Yeah, I have a degree, which is great. A lot of people have degrees, but what have you done with it? How have you applied yourself and how are you looking to move forward? So hopefully that answers that question, but they are both so valuable and I think getting your education does have a resilience component to it. It shows that you're willing to study and you're willing to get good grades or you're willing to go to class. There's so many different elements to that. Have you ever experienced job rejection? How do you overcome this feeling? And I love this question because it's just a real feeling that I think society, we don't really normalize rejection being an emotion that we should learn how to process and learn how to, yeah, process. <laughs> I've experienced job rejection. I only know one person in my life and one of my mentors, she has never been rejected from a job interview. Like never been rejected, never, ever, ever. And I was like, that, that is crazy. But yeah, I have experienced job rejection and something that I think I've learned through experiencing rejection, not taking things too personal, but also taking rejection as a form of feedback. And it's levels to that. Obviously no one wants to feel rejected. No one wants to put in effort for something then they don't get it like sometimes you feel ashamed sometimes you feel embarrassed but when it comes to rejection just not taking it too personal you put that foot forward maybe it wasn't your best foot forward maybe it was your best foot forward maybe the company is like hey you're a great candidate but someone else would be a better fit long term like being able to think of scenarios about why it didn't work out and I have learned after being rejected, those opportunities that I used to think that I wanted so bad, later on in hindsight, I realized that those opportunities were not meant for me long term. They were meant to teach me a lesson. They were meant to give me exposure, give me experience on interviewing, on interacting with other people and being able to just get better at interviewing. You have to reflect and you have to just really think about what do I think I did well? And what do I honestly think I could work on and do better? And also just looking on the internet for more tips and tricks about interviewing. You can never know too much about having good interview skills and you know, the industry can be changing so much. So things that you may have thought were a good response or a good way of like articulating your experience may be outdated. Taking some time to reflect is key and try not to jump into more interviews with the same toolkit. Always remember that other opportunities will come. I know it may not seem like that in the moment, but there's an opportunity waiting for you. So don't be too hard on yourself. There's so many opportunities out here and eventually you will get to where you need to go. I wish someone had told me that back when I was in college, when I would get rejected from different opportunities and I would just be really hard on myself. And I've learned over the years that everything is gonna be okay. If you give up now or if you beat yourself up now, you won't have that energy and that momentum to like really get to the opportunity that's meant for you. So. Use it as fuel to like get back up and keep going. All right, so the last question that I'm going to answer is, what should I be doing to improve my career prospects in the food industry? I would say doing your research, networking, working on your personal development, working on your professional development, and always asking questions. That is how you can always improve your career prospects in the food industry. There are so many people to meet. There are so many things to learn as well. So I think just always being up to date or trying to, learning about other people's journey, other people's story, and how they got to where they are, or what, what they even do. Over the years, I've learned so much Oh my gosh, even now, I still learn a lot about different ways that I can grow, different ways that I can become better and present myself better or apply myself better. It's just, 
it's a journey it is a journey so i encourage you all to just stay on the journey do not give up and if this is a career path that you really really want to embark on definitely give it your all you have nothing to lose and don't be afraid of things feeling difficult at some point because if it wasn't worth having, then it would be easy all the time. I hope you guys are doing well. I was able to answer some of your questions, and if I did not answer some of your questions, definitely leave them down in the comments so that I can answer them in a future video. If you guys would like to keep up with me, definitely follow me on Instagram, which will be linked here, and check out some of my latest videos. I will definitely be vlogging a little bit more. I have some exciting things coming up regarding just like, life work and i'm just so excited so make sure you guys stay tuned and if you guys like this video don't forget to give me a huge thumbs up it helps a lot and yeah that is it so i will see you guys in my next video bye you guys